One of the things that really helps me in my life and kind of gives me a, the right mindset on how to approach challenges, how to approach goals, how to just approach life in general is Stoic philosophy. You know, you have uh, Stoic philosophers uh, such as Marcus Aurelius, who is one of probably the most well-known Stoic philosophers. But Stoic philosophy has a lot of guiding principles that can help really help you uh, look at things and shape things in your life. And in this video, I'm going to give you my top 10 favorite Stoic quotes. Number one is by Marcus Aurelius. And the quote says this, you have power over your mind not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. I love that quote. I love that quote. And the reason that I love that quote is so often in life, we find ourselves worried about things that we cannot control. We, we get worried about and we focus so much energy on stuff we have no control over. Do you have control over what goes on in someone else's mind? No, but how often do you stress out about things that are going on in someone else's mind? Realize the things that you have control over. As a memory expert, as somebody who sells memory courses, do I have any control over someone else creating a memory course? No, but I can focus on the things that I have control over. When I went and competed in the USA Memory Championship, if I was focused on, oh, I wonder how good he is at memorizing a deck of cards. I wonder how he, how good he is at memorizing. I wonder how he good is at this. I mean, it's good to take a scope of the atmosphere and know where your opponents are, but to obsess over things that you have no control over is worthless. Focus on you, focus on your game, focus on hitting your marks. Focus on what you have control over and you will find strength. That's Marcus Aurelius in the first Stoic quote. Number two, my second favorite Stoic quote, or one of my favorite quotes, is also by Marcus Aurelius. And he says, the best revenge is to not be like your enemy. Sometimes in life, we find it that when we are opposed to something so strongly, we are focused all our negative energy on that person or that idea or whatever it is. And you know what happens when you focus all on something all the time? You run the risk of becoming like your enemy because that's what you're focusing on all the time. The best revenge is not to be like your enemy. So stop focusing all your negative attention there. Uh, don't become like your enemy. Don't become like the people that you despise or the ideas or the things that you don't like. Focus your enemy on the positives. Focus on you. The best revenge is not to be like your enemy. It's not to stoop to the levels that perhaps they stoop to. Seneca is also a great Stoic philosopher. And he said, he who fears death will never do anything worth of a man who is alive. Fear holds so many people back. I mean, it, it has held me back in my life. What did Franklin Delano Roosevelt say? We have nothing to fear about but fear itself. You know, it's been said that worries like a rocking chair. You're making movement, but you're not going anywhere. The person who fears death will never do anything worthy of a man who is alive. You know, I, I, I uh, served uh, in the war in Afghanistan, and I was did nothing heroic. Uh, I was not a was in a combat zone, but I'm not a what, what you I'm not a combat veteran. But when I think about the heroism of some of those men and some of those w women who ran towards the bullet fire, and I just think, wow, man, they were not thinking about death in that moment. They were thinking about their mission or or their goal. And it's just such a powerful way to live. And most of us, the things that we are fearing are not bullets flying to our face. We're fearing rejection. We're fearing what our friends think. We're fearing if we are going to look stupid or silly or if we're going to waste our time. Those things are so silly to fear, especially when the reward is so great. So make sure you don't have your fear out side of what it should be. A healthy fear is good. I'm not going to prop a piece of wood between two buildings in downtown Fort Worth on the high level and walk across of it. That is a healthy fear and that's a common sense that's going to keep me alive. But don't let ordinary normal fear hold you back.
Seneca has another great quote, and it says, difficulty strengthen the mind, as does labor the body. In my 20s and 30s, I used to uh, exercise a little bit more than I do now in my 50s. But in my 20s and 30s, I would always remember when I, when I was doing uh, uh, the bench press or something, uh, my friend would say, one more, come on, you got to get one more. And I would be like, oh, that was the last one. And then he would say, one more. And that one more is often where so much growth took place took place where I was, I was stretching myself. You know, Joe Rogan put it this way, and he said something to the effect of that he, the, the interesting thing about life is that the challenging times and the, the difficult times, are we are gonna often look back as the good times. You, we all wanna be at the top of the mountain. We all want to be at the top of the mountain but I think you're gonna find, when you look back on your life, the happiest times were not necessarily when you were standing on the top of the mountain. The happiest times were in the process of you climbing up that mountain and the difficulties you had to go through and the changes that you had to go through. And then you do get the reward of being on the top of the mountain. But don't fear those difficulties because I think you're gonna look back on them as some of the best times of your life, but also they are good. They strengthen your mind just as lifting weights strengthens the body. Difficulties are good. Epictetus is one of my favorite Stoic philosophers as well. And he has a great quote. No man is free who is not a master of himself. Discipline equals freedom. Discipline equals freedom. That is, that, is, that, that is so powerful, and, and, and if I can synopse it in this, discipline equals freedom. You're gonna pay a price, all right? People always will say to me, Ron, you know, I don't want to uh, exercise, I don't wanna to go to the gym tonight or whatever, I'm just picking an example here, because I, I don't wanna pay that price. I wanna just sit at home and watch, and watch a movie. Okay, well guess what? You didn't pay a price. You didn't go to the gym. But that doesn't mean you're not gonna pay a price. You will pay a price. You're just gonna pay the price later. You can't avoid paying prices in life. A couple years ago, I went to the Great Wall of China and I went with a guy who had never been. I had never been. Neither one of us had ever seen the Great Wall of China. I was so excited. I ran up the stairs and I was running all over the Great Wall of China. Do you know what my friend did who had never been to the Great Wall of China? There was a chair at the Great Wall of China and he sat in that chair the entire time because at the elevation, he could not run in that elevation up in the mountains. He couldn't even walk the Great Wall of China. He paid a price. You will pay a price in life. You're gonna pay prices, it's, it's inevitable. But discipline equals freedom. It opens your, your life up to so much more later on. Discipline equals freedom. Or if you want to say it the way Epictetus said it, no man is free who is not a master of himself. Another thing, another way to look at this is, is it's been said that uh, we will distract ourselves with pleasure when we don't have discipline or a direction. You know what? I necessarily don't want to be in the studio today recording videos. But by having the discipline to do that, what are my other options? Distract myself with pleasure. Go watch a baseball game or whatever. This next one from Seneca is golden. This is a golden one. We are more often frightened than hurt, and we suffer more in imagination than in reality. Let me say that again. We are often more frightened than hurt and we suffer more in imagination than reality. Guys, that is, that is, a, that is a, a huge one for me. Do you know how often I, I will just stew about something, about somebody who said something, they did something that was so wrong and it irritates me so bad and I've worked it all up in my imagination, maybe to even worse that it really is. Or maybe there's something that hasn't even happened that I am predicting will happen and I'm concerned or have anxiety about that. We are more hurt in our imagination often than in reality. And that goes back to the stoic philosophy of controlling what you can control and not concerning yourself 
to an extent with outside events. Here's the next one, and this is a quote by Marcus Aurelius, and it says, If you are pained by an external thing, it is not this thing that disturbs you, but your own judgment about it. And it is in your power to wipe out this judgment now. It is our reaction, not the actual events that cause our distress. Two people can experience the same thing. Two people can look at that same thing two different ways. And those two different ways are going to determine their response to it, their internal anxiety to it, or how they feel about it. Great, great quote by Marcus Aurelius. Next, don't explain your philosophy, embody it. This is by Epictetus. There was a quote I memorized years ago that said, uh, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I'd rather you walk with me than merely show the way. People oftentimes don't want to be lectured to, but if you just live your life in the way that that lecture would go, their ears are are, are very prone to listen to the example of your life and the example they see with your, their eyes more than a sermon on how, how you should be. Don't explain your philosophy, embody it. Here's another one from Epictetus. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This is similar to several of the quotes before, and it all comes down to not events, but how we handle it, how we respond to it. And finally, this is one that is real good for me to keep in front of my mind. It's by Seneca, and it says, the whole future lies in uncertainty. Live immediately. Last year, I went to four funerals, four funerals of people close to me. Two were in their 70s and two were in their 50s. And I think we always plan, oh, I'm going to do this later or do this tomorrow. And surely you can't do everything today. You have to plan some things for the future. But the entire future lies in uncertainty. Live immediately. I really love Stoic quotes and Stoic philosophy, and these are 10 that have really uh, impacted me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed them. Comment down below with what is your favorite Stoic philosophy or your favorite Stoic philosopher. Matter of fact, my Instagram, at BrainAthlete, I have a lot of Stoic uh, quotes on that page. You may recognize them from this video. I'll see you guys later on the next video.